What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the House of Da Vinci 3, episode number six. I was being a little bit tired last time. 75 is obviously not seven. <laughs> 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. It's, it's, it's five. It's five, friends. Now, I know that. I obviously know that. I got all the other ones correct. I just was a wee bit tarred. Obviously. So hopefully we fixed this now. And this will lead us to the next step. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh look, wow, yeah, crazy when you when you measure it correctly what it comes out to. Need that. Full powder flask. Okay. Now. What do I want to put that in? Not this, I would imagine. Dude, <laughs> so this is probably a mistake to do this at like... Uh, 4 a.m. after I've been writing papers and doing responses for work all day. Or for school. Might have been a mistake. Might have been a mistake. I mean, I'm not blowing this up. That's okay. We'll get to where we were going. I promise. Just might need to click around for a bit until... It clicks back into my head what we were doing. Here we go. I got there. Ignite! Ignite! Alright, we're melting the resin for the key, I remember. Oops. Did more than melt. Did more than melt. <laughs> oh well, it'll be fine. Gosh, I've been playing this puzzle game so late because I'm just so busy throughout the day. And of course I'm obsessed with the Spider-Man game, so there's that too. Give me my gauntlet. Uh oh. <clears throat> well, this was rude. The trap has sprung, Jaco. Does the situation remind you of something? I guess it's fate that the better should have power over the uh, the rest. And what about those two nannies of yours, happily drinking in safety while they sent you into the lion's den? In your place, I would be upset. But I am not interested in your feelings. Just listen to me and then do as you are told. It's in your own interest. Heard you already met the Vipers Tangle calling themselves a lofty Ordo Justitialis. That's good. What you don't know is that they are currently led by the Pope. He is the puppet master. He would be the one profiting if they got their hands on a working time machine. And I have very personal reasons to hate Pope Julius II. I've been reading your letters. Everything. I was the most powerful man in all Italy. But Fortuna the Fickle was. Or Fortuna the very early. Julius II had his predecessor. And my father, Alexander VI, killed. He usurped the chair of St. Peter and misused the power of his station to take everything from me. My position in the Order, my prestige and reputation, and even lighter name. And thus, I bet everything on one last gambit. To obtain the time machine. 
and reverse my destiny. I'll give you the glove you seek. But I want something in return. I know you are too much of a coward to kill the Pope. Besides, I wouldn't let anyone take the pleasure from me. <coughs> but I have another use for you, Giacomo. When my father was still alive, he appointed me to the Ordo Eustitialis to find out more about the broken time machine and search for someone who could make it work again. Then we came to that Leonardo da Vinci of yours. And during this time, I learned something very interesting. Generation after generation of grandmasters inherited this amulet. When the order fell to the Pope's might, the Pope took it, and in time, he granted it to his successors, along with the power over the Ordo Eustitialis. <laughs> it's only a piece of metal, but it is a very powerful symbol. A symbol of supremacy over the Order, and I want it. And that means you, Giacomo, will get it for me. I don't care how you do it. But as I am an eternally gracious man, I'll give you a hint. In the Pope's study is a secret passage which will lead you directly to the amulet. Make one of your nannies help you. The monk was always in the Pope's good graces. He might finally be useful and maybe could even atone for getting you into this mess, don't you think? But that's your problem. As well as getting out of this cage. And don't forget, the amulet for the glove, piece for a piece. When you get it, I'll let you know where we will meet again. This is a token of my goodwill. We will see each other soon. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Giacomo. Well, at least he didn't kill us. Should have known. Intrigue is second nature to Borgia. He stayed one step ahead. He knew exactly what I was looking for. He knew about me and Leonardo and Luca. He may even deliberately leaked information about his hiding place to lure us to Rome. God knows how long he'd been watching me, mocking me, waiting for me to spring his magnificent trap. It's hard to say how much I can trust what he told me, but in this case, I think the best interest to provide sufficient insight into the situation. Most shocking was the detail that the Pope was the one controlling the Ordo Eustitialis. <laughs> Portia didn't mention how it happened. I wasn't in a position to ask questions. Another important piece of the puzzle is the obvious hatred Borgia feels for the current Pope. According to his words, the Pope was behind his decline and the death of his father. It is true that the word of a sudden death of Rodrigo Borgia echoed around Italy, and it was rumored that it may not have been entirely natural. But the most important thing that came to light from Cesar Borgia's monologue was the fact that he's willing to trade Leonardo's glove. He wants me to break into the Pope's chambers and steal the amulet that symbolizes his power over Ordo... Eustitialis. He said that it's a mere trinket, but has some high symbolic value. I don't know whether to believe that, but given the situation, I have no choice but to accept the exchange for now. Where the box? All right, give me the box. Okay. I need green to go down, bro. Oh, wait, here we go.
wind it up. Thank you. Now. If you don't mind, I would like to be let out of my cage. Easy peasy. Next chapter. Whoa. It's a fun little map. I like how they did that. The Pope's Chambers. All right. Let's do it. Sorry, I'm writing the title of the chapter down. We must wait before they present us. I would be calm if Leonardo was with us here, but uh, we couldn't possibly include him as the Order knows him well. <laughs> and according to Borgia, they are beholden to the Pope. At least we will attract less attention. We must still be careful, though. Julius II is cunning as a fox. I indeed know him from before, when he was... But a cardinal, he was always straight hard and never afraid to use his brilliant mind to fulfill his goals. Did you know that when he became Pope, he confessed that his new name is not in honor of St. Julius, as most cardinals expected, but after Julius Caesar? He is a good man, and was the situation different, he would make a great ally. It seems we have a few moments, so uh, let's go over our plan, yeah? After I tell the Pope why I came, he will surely want to speak to me privately. Hopefully outside his study. <laughs> In the meantime, you will have to get there and find the passage leading to the amulet. I will try to distract him for as long as possible, but you must return to the audience room before we are back. Hey, no timed puzzles. I can't wait for this to be over. I'm as nervous as a cat. We don't, we don't play that game. Quick prayer to Saint Francis, <laughs> or rather, maybe to all the saints. I hope God will forgive me this ruse against my old friend. <laughs> Luca Bartolomeo de Pacioli with an escort. The Holy Father expects you. The Holy Father expects you. All right, this way now, into the loading Francis room. Can face of a rascal. This could only be Luca Pacioli. It's a pleasure to meet you again, old friend. Those fingers, oh, though. Father, you honor me greatly by making time for me. Allow me to introduce my pupil and protege, Giacomo of Ferrara. This is your pupil? Boy, you should regard your teacher highly. He is a wise man, even if he lacks seriousness. But as Dr. Angelicus said, of all the soul's passions, sorrow is the most harmful to the body. You are surely aware that many duties stem from my station, and I'll have to apply to them by the time the bells toll evening Angelus. But until that time, you have my full attention. I heard you have important news for me. What is it? Your Excellency, I heard about the righteous struggle you lead against the Borgia family. Maybe I could do my part to help turning the proverbial wheel of justice? Not here, my friend. Let us go for a walk through the gardens. There you can tell me everything. Giacomo, you wait here. Um, this is only for the Pope to know. In the meantime, boy, you can pass the time reading. I'm sure you will find a book that will interest you. Hmm? Maybe. You need to follow the Pope. He's an important person and needs guarding at all times. He also, like, lost his head, I think, rendering on the way out. All right. Order Eustatalius' 
If we trust Borgia under the Pope's control, that means that if we want to negotiate with Pope Julius II, we must do so without Leonardo, for whom the order is still searching. Luca knows the Pope personally. The Pope is said to be a man of wisdom, although short-tempered and lustful for power. Luca believes that if he had all the information, he would make the right decision in time, but time is a luxury and we are desperately short of. <clears throat> so we have no choice but to act behind his back as Borgia proposed. Julius II's hatred of the Borgias is well known, so his attention will be occupied by Luca telling him where Borgia is hiding and adding some details about his activities. Perhaps the Pope and Borgia will delay each other, but the main reason for this conversation is something else. I will take this opportunity to sneak into the Pope's study and find the secret room in which the amulet of the Order Eustatalius, this Grand Master, is supposed to be hidden. Exactly according to plan, the Pope wanted to talk to Luca alone about Borgia, and they went to the gardens together. That means I have the perfect opportunity to look around. The Pope mentioned that he had until the evening Angelus. I think I can trust Luca to make sure he returns only at the sound of the Vatican's loud bells. The bell, summoning for the Angelus, must be my final signal to leave. The Pope may have locked the study behind him, but when did a mere lock stop me? Fair enough. Well, let's go take a look at that lock, shall we? Okay. I need something to put in there. Like this bookmark. No? Not this bookmark. That was a lie. Um, I actually need something different, apparently. Really? You're telling me this is not what I needed? Because, like... I could have sworn this is what you would want me to use. Um, what can I click? Doesn't seem to be much of anything that I can click on. Hmm. Yes, I mean, not trying to be rude, but like it seems pretty simple. Okay, I didn't see that. My bad. My apologies. Found it. Didn't see the tiny little screw. <laughs> we got there. <clears throat> when Luca told me on the way that Julius II had chosen his name as a tribute to St. Julius, but to the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar was quite skeptical. However, looking at the decor of his study, I probably owe Luca an apology for my distrust. Oh, joy. Missing a piece of the statue. Caesar's missing like a badge. Okay. Eight. Symbol on the floor. The SPQR. Chessboard. I might go on the Julius Caesar statue or bust, sorry. <clears throat> Didn't realize everyone in this world had so many secrets. Maybe he won't, his secrets won't be too deep, you know? 
Maybe. <clears throat> Sorry for clearing my throat so much, guys. Easy enough so far. Climb the spiral staircase to an upper wooden floor. The lower part of the room showed the poop, pope to be the pope, the pope to be a man. Sorry, fascinated by the Roman Empire, man who was relentless and militant. The part of the room gives his character more depth. There are dozens, perhaps hundreds, of books with different themes. Not all of them religions, religious, and a model of a basilica resembling the works of old masters. I wonder what secrets I'll discover here. I mustn't forget to take advantage of the view offered by the ornate balcony above the room. Maybe I can spot something I missed earlier. Maybe. I would like that. Thank you. Trying to see if there's anything that's weird about the design or anything like that. I bet this is the secret. Looks kind of like a check board almost. Almost. Okay. What's the goal here? Fitting it entirely in the green, maybe? go down like I know where I need you to go you need to go right here but if I move you there then I can't get you out so hmm There we go. Nice. <clears throat> One, four, two, three. Nailed it. Chess piece. Okay. Just piece of the staircase. This is C three, so it's like that's C four, C five, and C six, right? So it should go on C six. I would imagine. Six, please. C six, sorry. No. Oh, I need to move everything, don't I? The the knight, sorry, the horse. <laughs> the knight needs to go to. Well, if this is C. That's F. The knight needs to go to F4. The 
the queen needs to go next to stairs. And the king needs to go. Boom. Open sesame. Imagine if that was all the puzzles and I was done. green to green red to red and blue to blue how would that work We want green to be ran to here. And we want green to come from here? Yes. Okay. We want red to run to here. That doesn't seem right. No, no, no. I don't I don't need your assistance at the moment. Problem is I need so I need red to run from there. If I want red to run from there. Across to here, down to there, and into there. Nailed it. Okay. Then blue. I wanted to run from blue. I mean, it could it'll be that simple. Okay, that one was easy. Sweet. Climb up and snag it. It's finally able to enter a hidden chamber beneath the Pope's study. Right in front of me is a large, majestic statue. According to its attire, it's one of the Pope's predecessors. In the center of his chest is the ornate badge under a glass lid that must be the amulet of the Order's Grand Master that Borgia sent me for. It's amazing what can lie undiscovered just a few dozen feet from where hundreds of people pass there every day. I've heard all sorts of tales of secrets in the Vatican many times before, but I never suspected that they were based in truth, let alone that I'd ever see any of them with my own eyes. Huh. Well. 
We got this. Your Excellency Pope Gregory the Ninth. Ninth? I think so. Frederick II challenges immutable truths and undermines the authority of the church. A prime example is the way he handled the crusade. Your Excellency ordered him to take Jerusalem, and what did he do? He could have sent those infidel dogs into hell itself, but he would rather break bread with them. He followed the letter of your command while absolutely rejecting its intent. The following story is a similar example. Frederick want wondered what language the first man had spoken. With the thought alone, he ignored the natural order since the time of the Tower of Babel. But his son sin is far for worse. In an obsessive desire to answer a question that Lucifer himself Himself whispered at him he had babies taken from their parents he isolated them and the wet nurse who took care of them wasn't even allowed to speak unsurprisingly without maternal love the children died frederick did not repent instead he executed the wet nurse so that his sin would not have no witnesses and there would be no other way to put it he's the antichrist your devoted monk oh my no good no good my friends I think we're a little bit over time, but like I'm slightly obsessing at the moment with the game. So don't mind me if we go a little bit over time right now. Just a little bit though. We're not going to go crazy over time. Not too crazy over time. Okay, can I hang that in this? This causes it to light up another puzzle. Alright guys, that's gonna do for this episode. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you've got anything to say, go to the comments below. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the bell. If you want to see more, check out this video down here. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.